This is the 2024 GMC Acadia AT4. Is this the most versatile Acadia trim level? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Mike Morgan Buick GMC in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we're gonna go over the particulars on this fully redesigned for 2024 GMC Acadia. If you want to know more, check out the link that's down in the description of the video. And one of the common questions you're going to receive on these videos when you see something fully redesigned, how much bigger is it? It's 10.6 inches longer and 3.2 inches taller. But here on the AT4 trim level, there is one other difference. Every other trim level has a ground clearance of 7.3 inches. In the case of the AT4, we're looking at 7.8 inches. As far as your lighting goes, everything is going to be LED. Headlights, daytime running lights, turn signal indicators, and your fog lights down there on the lower portion of the front end. Everything functional here as far as the upper and the lower grills go. We're gonna have our red recovery hooks. And as you saw at the top of the video, we're gonna have the AT4 badging on the grill right there. A nice look with the grill. I like how the sun sets that off. It's not just one color. I think that works really, really well. And how about our tire and wheel setup? Well, one thing that brings a lot of versatility here is going to be the fact that the AT4 is going to be all wheel drive. So especially for those of you who live in the north, get a lot of snow, you know where that's gonna come in handy. That's a good thing. How about our tire and wheel setup? We've got 265 on the width, 65 series sidewall, and the AT4 wheels at 18 inches. You also have a spare tire. There's our AT4 logo on the door. We'll have that on both sides. And almost everything you want is going to be here with these side view mirrors. They're heated, they're power adjustable, the turn signal indicator is built in. The only thing missing is they are not power folding. They are manually folding. So, just something to know about. Let me turn around here and we'll again take advantage of the bright Louisiana sunshine. There is your remote. So, if you're looking to see exactly what the remote looks like and that's why you watch the video, well, there you go. It has remote start, lock and unlock, power tailgate button right there and your panic button as well now on the door handles when you have the remote on your person you've got this button right here that is passive entry on the front doors and the rear doors you can come to either door and lock or unlock all four doors that has a lot of conveniences as far as that goes especially if you need to come to the back doors first and have the roof rails up top. You can always buy crossbars to increase your cargo capacity. We'll also find a panoramic sunroof. We'll show you that from the inside in just a little bit. And we'll finish things off here on the rear. Something we're seeing a lot of automakers going away from is something that we see here. I think it's a good thing, and that is going to be the exposed exhaust outlets. A lot of automakers having more of a clean look back here, but I think it's good that GMC has stuck with the outlets right here. It just looks more traditional of a vehicle like this. At least in my opinion, you can tell me what you think about that. All-wheel drive logo, the Acadia logo, and again, the AT4 badging. We've talked about the exhaust outlets. Let's also talk about exactly what is being exhausted. The exhaust is coming from the now standard across all trim levels, 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. Now, before you run and say, oh man, a four cylinder, it isn't hurting for horsepower. It does make 328 horsepower and 326 pounds feet of torque. Should GMC have stuck with the six cylinder? I think so. Should they have made it at the very least an option? Yes, but this is what we have. Try it before you knock it, you might like it, see what you think. All of that's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And let's go over here to the window sticker and see what the numbers are. As far as MPGs, we're looking at 19 city, 24 highway, 21 combined, and 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. I'm always a fan of having the gas tank on the driver's side for obvious reasons. It just makes sense. And if you're curious, this is a 21.7 gallon gas tank. That's gonna be standard again across all trim levels. It's not exclusive to the AT4 trim level. If you're interested in towing with your Acadia, it can tow up to 5,000 pounds. How about cargo capacity? 
23 up to 97.5 cubic feet. Not bad for a midsize SUV. Here is how everything looks maximized. Underneath the floor, there is a lot of additional space and you'll actually use the instructions right here that show you where the spare tire is and how to access it. All you're going to do is remove these nuts right here and you basically pull this whole area out. It's not that difficult to do unless you're trying to do it one-handed, which is exactly what I would do. I also wanted to show you one important trick. You might wonder about the headrest being stuck on the middle seat right here. Well, you can see how everything went down over on the other side. All you have to do to remedy that is to use the release on the front of this seat to pull that forward. You just slide it forward on its tracks that allow it to slide back and forth. And then, and we'll get this out of the way right here, the seat will go ahead and fold flat. We'll take a look into the interior. We're gonna have a nice large armrest right here, plenty of room, plenty of space. Always a good thing. I like that it's completely flat. It does have some padding built in right there. The door bins are nice and large. And to gain access to the third row, just pull up on the release right here and move the seat up and out of the way. It does give a pretty decent size opening right there to get in and out of, but let's see what we're going to find as far as leg space goes. Here's what we have. So the seat here on the left-hand side where I'm sitting right now is all the way back. There is not even half an inch of space, but I do have some space right there. I could be okay back here for a little while. And you had the pass-through right there. You could just stick your leg out and at least have one leg that can stretch out. Now, a common question to be answered right here is no, these rear seats do not recline. They do have a little bit of recline built into them, but they don't actually recline. And there is seating for three people back here as evidenced by one, two, three seat belt buckles. And we'll find a USB option right there, a cup holder here, and a little bit of space behind that. And as always, I like the roof mounted air conditioning vents over what you would see in say a Honda Pilot where they're mounted down here. It just seems to be more effective and efficient right there. And one thing I do want to make sure that I cover is this. Leg space with the seat all the way forward actually is somewhat reasonable. I don't know how likely it is that somebody would sit with the seat that far forward, but you never know. And from this vantage point, there is the sunroof, that front portion opens, and there is a power shade that can be drawn back and forth. Rear seat pockets are found on the back of each seat and also cup holders on the back of the center console. And the command center is also going to be here as far as controlling the third zone of climate control Everything for fan speed, temperature, you can see what all is there. And these middle row seats are heated, but heated only. We also have a power outlet right there and a couple of USB ports. The only thing I do wish GMC would change back here, this is my personal opinion. Other people might say that's no big deal for me. I wish the armrests were a little bit longer. It just seems like I need more support for my wrist up here. Seems like it would be more comfortable. But again, some of you might say, you know what, Tom, I've sat back there, I've used those, I think they're just fine. Now you'll notice what just happened right there. I wanted to demo that motion sensor I was talking about earlier in the video where you can stand right there if you had the remote on your person and the power tailgate will open. Now one thing that might be of interest to some people is what happens if you walk by and you don't want it to open. Unless you stop and stand there, it's not going to open. It will beep when you walk by. I don't know if I can get it to do that right now. But if it just beeps and you just keep on moving, yeah, it's not gonna do it for me now, but if you just keep walking, it won't go ahead and open. You have to stand there in place. So in case you are curious, there's the answer to that question. And I know a lot of people like to see the side profile of these vehicles. So I wanted to give you a few seconds to take a look at that in case you were one of those people. And it's a little hard to see possibly, but I know a lot of you are asking me to show you the window sticker in my videos. There is the window sticker. You can always screenshot that and zoom in on what you'd like to see.
The sticker price on this Acadia AT4 is $58,530. And if you're wondering, $3,490 of that is going to be what we're going to see right here. I don't know if the indicator is going to come on for me or not, but we do have Super Cruise here. That's what this bar is right here. That will light up when you need it to when you're going down the road. Super Cruise is very easy to use. You basically use it by pushing this button right here. And in the event that Super Cruise is not available or you need to turn adaptive cruise control on, it will give you that information up there on the dashboard. Now, let's take a look at what else we have here and what else you're paying for beyond what I've already shown you. Over on the passenger side over there, we're going to have a nice large armrest and door bin once again. We're going to have nice, comfortable, power adjustable seats. And both the driver and passenger seats are not only power, they're heated, they're ventilated, and they also have lumbar support. And we'll work our way over here to the driver's side door where you're going to find all of your different controls that you expect to see here for controlling the positioning of your side view mirrors and you have your power window controls right there another nice large door bin if you want to go through your driving modes that's right here so let's do that let's see what our driving modes are we'll see exactly what we have so we're going to have multiple in no particular order actually we'll start here with the particular order it starts in normal and then we have sport off-road you can see the graphics that go with that terrain there's our tow haul mode and then we go back to normal so i hope you can see that okay i apologize for the glare just where the sun is right now that's just the way it is and we're going to see that we have the digital instrument display or driver's display here very nice very convenient i like that that is always a good thing and then our steering wheel mounted controls we're going to have shifter paddles on the steering wheel obviously your indicator for adaptive cruise control and then over here we have the multitasking control that works for not only your turn signal indicators that i know some of you don't know how to use but i think you do know how to use the front and rear window wiper controls so also we're going to have over here the shifter now the shifter works this way you pull it back and then you have to keep it back like that because you can't move it this way pull it back that's how you go into drive and keep it pulled back up into reverse and to go back into park we push right there quite a bit going on with the infotainment screen that's for sure what do you think about this screen if I wanted to change the temperature, but I didn't want to actually reach down and do anything physically, I can do this. Hey Google, adjust the temperature to 70 degrees. Okay, changing the temperature to 70 degrees. And there's actually quite a few other things you can do with that. A lot of voice commands, a lot going on where that's concerned. So I apologize if I said anything off in your houses, but it's okay. Just laugh. It's funny. It's funny that those things can actually happen in this day and age. And how about our camera views? Well, you're going to have many, many different views. And you'll notice the green dot right here. When you see the dot underneath, that means there's two different views. That's our rear view right there. That's our front view camera. And then when we look from the overhead view, we have two different views there and also from our side view mirrors. And we also have the rear view right there. If you wanted to back up to a trailer and tow 5,000 pounds, you could do that. It's very simple to use. And I really like this overhead view right here. That is nice. So we'll go back out of that. You can see what else we have here. The Google Play Store, Alexa, trailering. If you need to go in and use that, let's make sure that I actually select the right thing. There's a lot going on here as far as your checklist and other things you can do. I'm not going to cover all of that, but I did want to just show you what's here. But something else that's very interesting is ambient lighting. And I'm going to attempt later in the video to hopefully get into an atmosphere where I can show you the ambient lighting here in this Acadia. It's not bad. It may not be Mercedes-Benz or BMW-like, but you know what? It's here. It's cool. I might as well show it to you. And we'll also go back here and go to settings. A lot of things going on here. You can see that we have connections, vehicle notification, apps, date and time, display, sounds. 
and profile accounts. We also have several other things here. I'm not going to cover everything there, but I did want to show you a couple of things here. One in particular, which is going to be our collision detection systems, because I know a lot of you like to know about that. We have automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, intercession, intersection collision braking, adaptive cruise go notifier. You can turn that on and off as well as side bicyclist alert and lane change alert. You have park assist with braking, rear cross traffic braking, and rear pedestrian alert. Nice to have those. You never know what might be going on around you. Sometimes you can't necessarily see those things. So you can see what else is here. Uh, you have your Super Cruise lane change that you can leave on automatic if you want to. It's not hard to use Super Cruise, by the way, which I mentioned earlier in the video. I have a video on how to do that. It works the same in all GM vehicles. So if you find one of my GMC Super Cruise videos, it's going to work the same in anything, no matter what it is. And you have your teen driver there, rear seat reminder. If you want to turn on or off buckle to drive, there's how you do that. I do recommend that you leave that on when you're driving, or at least leave your seatbelt on when you're driving, and you don't have to worry about that. A lot going on here, so much that maybe I should make a video on the infotainment screen by itself. Tell me what you think about that but it's so simple to use that you really don't need that. The hunt and peck method, as I like to call it, will definitely do the job. Here's everything for climate. If you want to use that, you can see what we have there. A nice system, it looks modern. Google Maps is here, built in. You've got your audio, you can pair your phone wirelessly. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto here. Very nice, very easy to use. And I gave you a little bit of a glimpse down here with the air conditioning, so you know what's here. As far as turning on your heated and ventilated seats, here's how we do that. You can turn that off or we can turn on the one of the three stages of heated or ventilated seats or we can just go to off right there and that's taken care of. Very easy to deal with. I like that. Here's your volume knob and something else that's really important here to know about. Here's how you turn your lights on and off and get that to stay up for us. You can turn that on to auto as it is. You can just turn your, well, let's see if we can get it to stay up long enough. There we go. Fog lights, headlights, auto, whatever you want to do. And if you go and select right there, some other things you might want to know about. You do have a head up display here, and I don't know how well it will show up. Hopefully you can maybe see that against that Yukon sitting in front of us right there with the black exterior color. But it is there, and you can go in and make many changes I do wish that some of these things still had physical controls, but they don't. So that's just the way it is right now. Tell me what you think about that. Do you think there should be physical controls for things like the head-up display adjustments? And you can see what else is here, but I just wanted you to see some of those things so you can see how to deal with that. Here's your wireless charging pad, and we're going to have a little bit of space right here. Our cup holder is a nice large center armrest. Depending on where you set the seat, that could be really comfortable depending on your height because it is a little low depending on your height. So if your seat's high up, you raise it up, you can raise and lower the height on both seats. Well, that can make a difference. And you have the removable tray right here in case you were wondering. No, that is not all the space you have right there. There is the additional space that is within the center console. And also, speaking of the console, let's take a look at the upper console. We'll show you what's here as far as that goes. Here are the controls for your sunroof and the power shade. You also have a sunglass holder right there. I also wanted to make sure to show you the pass-through right there. I don't know how well you can see it. I think we can see it okay. There's also a 12 volt right there. Kind of hard to get to, but it's there. Probably easier for the passenger to get to that. But nice to see the use of that space. More and more automakers seem to be heading in that direction. Also, we're going to have a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. All you have to do is drop that lever right there and you can make your adjustments. Okay, I know there's not a lot to see where the ambient lighting is concerned, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. You can see it up there on the dash here on the doors. Now, you don't have any in the rear on the AT4 trim level. However, if you go to the Denali trim level, then you will have some in the back seat in addition to what we have here in the front seat area. Just give you a quick look around here at everything. The blues tends to show up on camera really well, but I'll throw in a couple of other colors just for the fun of it. Well, I don't know, 
that's I guess that's what you would call pink or maybe magenta. I'm not sure which is which. But here are some of the different colors. One of these is bound to be pink. So you can see that. There is purple right there. That seems to show up pretty well. Try one of the lighter colors and see how it looks. See if that'll come up for me right there. There we go. And you do have just, I guess, good old-fashioned white if you wanted to use that. Maybe that's not a white. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. But a lot of different options here. And you can turn the brightness up and down, as you can see right here. All right, we're going to get out on the road for our test drive. I'm going to hurry up and get up the road here so I can race this C7 Corvette. Just kidding, I'm not really going to do that. But I am driving in sport mode just to see what it's like compared to comfort mode. Comfort mode, it got down the road, no problem. But I can tell a little bit of a difference here being in sport mode compared to just driving in comfort. So you're going to have well, the typical change you're going to see where that's concerned, which is basically just the RPM of the engine is going to rise a little faster, lets things move a little more freely. And so it doesn't really change a lot, but you will tell a little bit of a difference. The only thing I wish would happen when you change driving modes, there's so few vehicles out there that will stay in the same driving mode they were in when you turned the vehicle off, because likely you want to stay in that mode, you might. And you have to go back into that mode in most cases. I've been in a few vehicles. I don't recall what they were. Maybe just a couple that actually do retain the same driving mode no matter what until you change it. Overall, it has a nice, comfortable ride quality by my standards. Uh, plenty of room here in the front seat. A lot of adjustability for those of you who are wanting to know about the drivers who are over six feet tall. They're definitely going to fit no problem. So that's no big deal because you can raise and lower these seats very easily. Quite a bit of adjustability built into that. So that's nice. And with the adjustability of the steering wheel, well, that helps too. Easy to see out of. You do have a little bit of a blind spot over your right shoulder if you're looking into the rear corner back there into the third row area, but no problem. You have blind spot monitoring over there. And if your mirrors are set correctly, that really shouldn't be a big deal anyway. Although I do like the vehicles that have the cameras in the side view mirrors. Typically you'll see this with Hyundais and Kias, but you turn on your turn signal indicator and you get the view from that camera right on the dashboard area, the instrument display on that side of the vehicle. It'd be nice to see a lot more vehicles have that. Speaking of that, everything's easy to get to, easy to use. The technology is not a big deal to learn or use. I do like the accessibility and you do have Google Assistant here. And basically you can ask her to do a lot of different things as far as giving you navigation. You can do that with voice command. As you saw earlier in the video, you can even change the temperature of the air conditioner if you want to. I don't know what the limitations are there. Obviously, I, I feel confident you can't tell her to turn on ad adaptive cruise control or, or um, super cruise, anything like that. But one way or another, a very versatile vehicle. And let's talk real quick about what would make something versatile. What all is it capable of? Well, let's talk about that here. It's capable of doing the typical duties of an SUV. It can haul the family around. You can go on vacation with it. You have a good amount of cargo capacity. You can tow with it. But you also have the added benefit of all-wheel drive here. You've got the different driving modes. So depending on where you live and what you're dealing with, well, that is going to come in handy. And by the way, one thing while I'm doing it here, and we're about to have a lot of time to talk. I'm not going to do this the whole time, but I think I hear a train coming. Yep, I do. So the one thing I didn't mention earlier, over here on the left-hand side of the steering column, that's where your auto stop start button is. If you need to turn that off or turn it on, depending on what you're doing, well, that's how you do that. And I hope this guy in front of us knows that his rear door is open. And there is the answer to the question. I was actually contemplating whether or not I should go up there and let him know, but he figured it out. And for those of you who are wondering, there's the answer to that question. And there it is, the 2024 GMC Acadia AT4. If you're looking for a 25 Acadia, well, there's really not going to be any differences between this model and the 25 as it was fully redesigned for 2024. I guarantee you we'll see no changes in 2025. So is this the most versatile trim level? of the 24 Acadia models. 
I think it is just because it has a little bit more capability with the increased ride height. When you have all wheel drive, that helps. All of those things are beneficial. It depends on what you're doing and where you're going. But if you're dealing with bad weather, maybe the water's a little bit high on the road you're driving on, then you never know. That 0.5 inches of additional ride height could come in very handy. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Mike Morgan at Buick GMC for loaning me this Acadia for the day so I could tell you all about it. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss any future videos and share this video on your timelines. That way other people can see it. If you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.